is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I don't want to lose. I want to win. I need professional help. Sports Betting Weekly. Sports Betting Weekly, sponsored by EasySportsData.com. The books use data. Shouldn't you too? And this is Easy Sports Data, like the preschoolers use. EasySportsData.com. I win here and I win there. Now what? Sports Betting Weekly. I want to win. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. You should also check out sportsbettinglessons.com. You'll learn some old tricks because sometimes how you bet is more important than who you bet. Sportsbettinglessons.com. Let's just do it. Let's meet this thing head on. You were you were in it to win it. Talk about an education. Sports betting weekly. Wow, winning. Sports betting weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome to Sports Betting Weekly. I am second half Chaz. As always, you could be watching on sportsbettingweeklylive.com or with our friends at Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. However, it's 8 o'clock, East Coast time, and you're live. It is Sports Betting Weekly. We have Black Hawk West from 151 Sports Investing. We've got John from GMF Sports. And we're going to talk to John first because John wasn't here last week, was he? Yeah, no, I, I took a little uh, week hiatus, so to speak, a little vacation in you the went to uh, Costa Rica. And you yeah, really, Costa Rica. there's not anybody, there's really not a lot of people in the world that you could tell your troubles to. If what you got to say starts with, I went to Costa Rica for a week. <laughs> exactly. It's really hard to complain to anybody at that point in the situation. So it was I very, wanted, very I, I nice. need to give you a shout out. You literally were off the radar for a few days and you popped back. <laughs> your first day home, I think you landed in Vegas in the morning and you went 3-0 and for the day. Yeah, it, it was pretty impressive. I impressed myself. You know, nothing uh, feels better than coming back and uh, making some money, you, you know, so I'm glad it all worked out for us. Now, we are sponsored by championshipfootballs.com. Championship football is the coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. Now, they have a sister website, championship basketballs.com where they do the same thing they turn your favorite team's special season into the coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed now they have sold a lot of alabama footballs over the years who do you think they want to win the national championship in march madness but i, I gotta get over to west because west um, a lot of people know that you do that other thing the options thing I always forget the link in the name, but I really should remember. So re- refresh me. Yeah, it's uh, it's Chicago Options Trader. It's through Discord, and you know during the week we're we're picking stock winners, and and then come weekend uh, I, I do a Thursday night or a Friday night podcast, and we talk about the sports outlook for for the weekend. And uh, you, you know there there was well, many many that- nights you're doing that. They're coming here. Yeah, I do. I usually do that at six o'clock uh, on Thursday Central Time. So get about a half hour break in between bathroom break, and then and then I have to bring it up. Is you know I listen to it, and and most of the stuff I already know, but we talk so much that you know what? Yeah, it just goes in one out there. You don't pay attention, but when it's on audio file, you're listening to it. I I, I had to give you a kudos. You said to somebody that and you mentioned the guy's name about why you don't think you would take Baylor given 26 and a half because they win by 24 and you're mad at yourself. And it was exactly what happened. Well, I was just explaining how I think right on the number. I'm not talking about, yeah, that's kind of how it went down. <laughs> I did. But the unfortunate thing is I was just trying to describe how to make money on that game without laying the points. And I was just a lucky guest, but it turned out to be a reality. Instead of laying the 25 and a half, you, it, it's 24. So I, yeah, it was just a lucky thing. All right. So I, I got a question uh, I, on you guys. Are you ready to talk some live action? And I, we should have done that first, but really those two things excited me. And sometimes I'm like a child. I get excited. I lose my way. Um, I had a real good start though, because I told you I went three for three. So I, 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 I saw that, Richmond scores X amount of points, and it's more than the the total was. And Mississippi State gives up a lot of points, 
and it was more than the total. They were both more than the total. So I bet all both team totals over and the first half over. So three for three is a great way to start the day. But you guys are uh, – you gave me some NBA stuff here. You gave me some uh, NHL stuff. What do you think right now with your eyeballs is the thing I should look at first? Well, we just we just missed the the play that I'm on. I was hoping that the goal wouldn't happen, but uh, the Rangers scored three goals in the first period, and I jumped on for a plus one forty payoff uh, for them to go over five and a half. They've been on fire for the last six or seven games since Panarin came back into the lineup. Um, that that ship has sailed. But there's there's two that I'm on right now. I'm on Columbus over one and a half for the for the game, and I believe they're going to get it in this second period, and it's going to cash out during this show. Columbus uh, has owned Carolina, which is odd because Carolina is clearly one of the best teams in the NHL, but Columbus has owned them. Uh, it is a minus 125 payoff. Uh, o- Columbus over 1.5 goals for the game. Uh, and then the other one I'm on is the Senators. The Senators already have one goal. They've also been a matchup nightmare for Toronto. Uh, I'm over two and a half goals for the Sens for the game. And that is uh, that's a minus 105 payoff. And that one, I, I don't know that that cashes before we get off the show, but I believe that it'll happen second period and early third. All right. So, golly gee, you were so passionate about that first one, but I couldn't get the get the hockey thing to open up. So I'm on the hockey live page. It was Buffalo. It was it was the Rangers over five and a half for the game at a plus one forty payoff. The score is now four to nothing. No, no, the second period one. The second period one is is uh, Columbus. Uh, Columbus over one and a half for the game. And I believe they may get that in the second period and they're playing against Carolina. All right. So yeah, I'm on the book I'm in right now. And I, we're going to, we're going to talk about those two. The book I'm in right now. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting a team total. Oh yeah. Columbus. There it is. Okay. You know how they come and they go and they come and they go. They, they're they there, then they're gone, then they're there, then they're gone. It's just amazing. Live betting, and you talk about that on your podcast. Live betting is really a lot of luck that you're able to click when the, when they have it open because you, you know, it happens. It goes away. All right, we're in. All right, we're in. So let's look at one more thing. Let's look at the college basketball because Mississippi State is down by four, and there's – um. There's just a few minutes left in that game. I, I'm, I'm going to bet Mississippi State plus three because three and a half I'm getting now because I, I just think they're going to win the game. They were given like four, but they cashed the first half. And boy, don't we talk about that all the time, guys, how really that first ticket. And 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 I always say I, the first bet of the day, I love winning the first bet. I hate winning the first bet. But you talked about it this week on your show too, Wes, about the fact that that first hit uh, changes what you can do it, it does and i i you cash the first ticket and i always preach this you cash the first ticket the second place you go is half the profit from that first ticket and you can't lose at that point from a dollar standpoint and when you win that one then you bring yourself back to your full unit and you know it's just basic bankroll management and you know john's not and I'm, I'm sure he advises something similar but i always go there and and you know it, it, once you get the numbers right, then you can take a little risk. Yeah, and it, and it really is. It, it it doesn't take a genius. I talk about that at the racetrack too. You you're playing with house money as well, and and not that you're going to change how you play, but you didn't have it in your pocket earlier, so it just gives you more opportunities. Remember, we talk about it with the one. You know, you have your way. Less than I call them my commandments. The bottom line is. 100% of the plays you don't make as you ran out of money are going to cash. I'm telling you right now, that's what's going to happen. All right, so we're live on a, a couple plays. We uh, we gave our shout-out. So, yeah, so what do you think? Alabama would be the number one if you uh, if you wanted to sell championshipfootballs.com to championshipbasketballs.com people. That, and then I'm thinking for us, because we sold so many, and Gonzaga is perfect season. That's got to be a good one too, right? What do you think? And then we're going down to Houston. We're doing a show at TriStar in Houston in June. So if Houston wins, so we got of the Sweet 16, we got three three lookers. I haven't seen if they're in the same bracket, though. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, all right. So before we go any further, we got to talk about what's happening here in a few, about 10 minutes from now. Ziggy's going to join us. Ziggy's been joining us for years. But he's going to join us specifically 
to talk the Florida Derby. Now, what I did is I reached out to our handicappers, and that's really the beauty of this show. You hang around as long as I have, and knock on wood, the Lord ain't taking me home. I talk to more people every year. I meet more people every year. I know a lot of people. Now, these two that I'm talking to today, they're very, very good. The, the, the options thing, Wes, you got to understand. I know you're good. I talked to you for years. But it was I was just listening to it to listen to it while I was doing other stuff. I had to stop what I was doing and go confirm what I thought was right. It was that this dude hit everything he said came out of his mouth on Thursday. It was true. It happened. It was really, really bizarre. But – um. I say I have no 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 clue where we are, but uh, he's going to talk Florida Derby, and, and I know Wes, you're technically going to the Arkansas Derby as of right now. I am going to the Arkansas Derby, and I, I just wanted to let you know the Rangers have scored uh, three goals in the second period, and they've already they've cashed three minutes into the second period over five and a half for me. So they scored six all together already. They have they have hit six goals. In Very the well done. Very. So, uh, there's there's that first cash, but yeah, I'm I'm going to the Arkansas Derby. It's uh, the weekend of the 16th, 17th, 18th of April. Yeah, right, correct, right. And that's and we were, we'll talk to that about Ziggy. And so what I did is I reached out to these guys and I basically said, hey, you, here's the races that are left, and there's like six of them. Um, and now I figure you know you're going to want to talk about the Arkansas Derby, so at least like five of them. So Ziggy picked the Florida Derby, but remember March 17th, there's those three races, right? The Wood the Arkansas, and the Santa Anita. And that's it. Then there's that one race, I think, that some kind of trial, if they still have it. And who knows? I mean, the world is different because of COVID. So, you know, uh, we're getting March Madness on Tuesday. I am so excited. I was excited last week. But knowing that, because we would write, we would be in the middle of serious basketball if this was a normal Thursday during March Madness, right? No doubt about it. All right, so John from GMS Sports Consultants, you've been back for you know most of the week. Uh, the the biggest thing you that impacted your sports betting in Costa Rica was blank. Uh, I I would probably say the Wi-Fi, you you, you know, and, and and maybe the drinks <laughs> would would be the would be the next two things. Uh, Wi-Fi in, in some of these countries, if you travel, you know, it was a little spotty, so that's the key issue. And then, you know, it's when you're sitting on a beach and it's, you know, 85 degrees and you got the drinks flowing, you know, that, that kind of hinders your ability to play some bets as well. So, but and it, uh, also, what it does, it yeah. lowers your need to have the action because you're really just in a very good place. And you know what, maybe they'll win, maybe they won't, but I'm very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You can, you're kind of the taking other, in just the scenery other, in general. That's so. why I've never liked poker. I don't play poker. I never, my, my son gets gets uh mad at me because i'll end up by the third or fourth hand i'm pushing i'm pushing if i got anything that's got any luck of getting any flop because i i don't like the game but the reason i don't like the game is because you can't be a good poker player and be drunk but you could be a great handicapper get drunk and watch the game the only problem is with those rum drinks then all of a sudden uh, you start betting horses from you know ch china <laughs> or hong kong or all kinds of stuff happens you know what i i you know how it is. If you're in yep. Vegas, this side where the sports book is on the right is full. The side where the horse players are is, is not. And so what happens is it's really easy to run up to the window and bet a dog race. You know, <laughs> it really is. And, you know, you could end up losing all the money back that you want on yep. dog races because then you start doing stupid stuff. Oh, look, they have the same name as my wife and my son. <laughs> and you start betting names and all kinds of crazy yep. stuff happens. All right, so before we go to break, I got a question for you guys. So, and this is a live action because really the live action, uh, we talk about it all the time, but it really is. Sometimes you're right, right? Sometimes you're wrong. So there's really only about four different ways that can go. So that's what I want to ask you guys. I'm going to start with John. John, how often do you estimate that on a game where you don't pull the trigger, uh, you mentioned one today, you were hoping for an early goal by the other team. Correct. Yeah. Like yeah. Maybe their, their odds are too big. So you're waiting um, and you don't pull the trigger and then they score three goals quick and they were worth the minus 260 in hindsight. You know what I mean? Yeah. How yeah. But I believe that was a Washington game. Uh, Washington versus, I think, the Devils. That was a game I think that I was eyeing early and I know there was some early goals. I wasn't exactly sure which way that was. How often, when you, on the course of your day, when that happens, 
do you get to the point then and then is it almost always you're done you can't do live action now it's too late you know yeah it, it definitely changes your perspective but but at that point you almost kind of eye the next opportunity because because it's always a number games uh, you, you want to see where you can get your money in at the best possible odds at that specific moment so while that opportunity passed you especially with live betting there's opportunities all across the board where maybe now you look at something different maybe as Wes was talking you you talk about team totals um you you, you know so you kind of change your mentality of thinking and once again this all comes into play with with live betting because you can always put yourself in the action where maybe you got a better line than what it was at the beginning of the game well, and, and like you said, really, all it becomes is a new race with a different starting line. That's, that, really that's it. Yep. It's still 40 yards. You're still playing to the end of the game, you know. How about you, Wes? What percentage do you think of those times um, do, do you don't pull the trigger and, and you should have pulled the trigger where you say, you know what, now I'm, now I, you can't really – you got to wait. You got to wait a little bit, you know. Well, in most cases, you're better off not even touching it. We've talked about it a hundred times, you know, it, like I give you Gonzaga, for example. I think they were a 19 point favorite uh, on their last game. You wait, if you waited one minute and 30 seconds, that's it. One minute and 30 seconds. You were able to take Gonzaga minus 13 and you were in a better situation. So you wait it out. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, then, you know, you, you just find another one. Um, that's part of why I don't bet on my teams. You know, I don't bet on the teams I have an emotional tie into because this is, it, it's it's about the business. Um, if I realize I'm wrong, then I try and find a way to, to to fix that. I was dead wrong about Ohio, University of Ohio in their last game. I mean, they were getting blown out, but I, I, I covered myself by taking the plus 16 and a half. I thought they were going to win outright, but I was wrong. And I, I ended up finding the right number. Uh, to cover myself and walk away with a little bit of change. And um, I think that's what you got to do. And if you can't find it in that game, we're, we got a Saturday coming up where there's there's four basketball games. And then if you go to the NHL or the NBA, I mean, there's opportunities everywhere. So I, I, I would advise anybody out there, don't get hung up on the one game that you were wrong about. Go be right somewhere. There's too many others. Well, speaking of being right somewhere, that was a very good segue. If you were with our cash tickets page, so you just go to Sports Betting Weekly. Uh, yeah, and you look for cash tickets. There's a header. There's like seven or eight things there. You go to cash tickets. You'd be uh, talking to us. And today you would have got the, the Richmond thing that I said. And it's exactly what happened. One team was averaging more than the point spread. One team was averaging uh, scoring more than one team was allowing more. It just made no They just scored their 67 point. So that's a nice winner for me because I was really confident in that one. Now, don't get me wrong. They may end up with 67. There's 38 seconds left but it don't matter because I'm on the next game now. Sometimes you lose, you're on the next game. Sometimes when you win, you're on the next game. All right, so we're going to start talking some horses. Now, we, we know we got Ziggy's going to talk to us about the Florida Derby. Uh, somewhere on my phone, I got the whole list. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, you're going to the Arkansas Derby West. John, we talked about it at the beginning of this season, the prep race season. Have you started at all even looking at the names of the horses that are going to be in the Derby? Uh, no, I have completely dropped the ball on that aspect of sports betting realm with, with the ponies this year. Uh, like I said, I haven't been following it. I haven't even picked up anywhere. So this is an area that I'm, you know, completely lacking in. So I'm, I will be relying on, on that info and from Blackhawk West here. So Right, but yeah. what happens yeah. is as you get closer and the races become more money, then they're on TV and stuff. I mean, you can't even, I got to use my account sometimes to find these horse races. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there's opportunities where, where as a field gets kind of minimized, you, you kind of get your selections. So if you're looking to bet, you can obviously do some research and stuff from there. But as of as of right now, I, I have generally no idea uh, what's going to happen. But as we get closer, you know, I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll pick out maybe a name that that sneaks out or maybe a little trainer uh, jockey combo that I like and go from there, you know. Yeah, that 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 always works. How about you, uh, Wes? I, you, you had mentioned earlier you like to get the, the horse out of, of Santa Anita, but uh, you know there's a couple other horses that run since that are good horses. You, this yeah, is, this if, be I mean, a Florida Derby. I um I, I the numbers. I, I believe it was the nine and the ten. It, Baffert's got a horse in the race. Uh, that that is an interesting one. I believe that's the nine. And then and then I I think we're we're looking at a six to one uh, morning line on. Uh, Gaffleone, the the jockey I disrespected. I think he's got a good ride there in that 
in that Florida Derby. I'll never forget that jock's name, but uh, um, yeah, he's I, not the nine and Baffert is the ten. Yeah, and I think Baffert going out to Florida for this race is is an interesting one because if he's traveling, he plans to win this race. Well, he just did it. Remember, he sent that horse to Oakland. Yeah, so. Oh, well. Three to two. I mean, think about what three to two is when it comes to the plus number, okay? Three to two is plus 150, correct? Right? Isn't that yeah. three to two? And so what that is, is what? Is that a, a three-point favorite or a three-point dog on the money line, basically? Somewhere around there. Yep, that's yep, that's nice, it. That's a nice play to have. That's a nice play to have. No doubt about it. All right, so um, all right, we're going to get ahead to break. When we come back. We're going to hear from Zeke. He's going to talk some uh, Florida Derby. You're listening to Sports Betting Weekly on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network and the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I really tell people, uh, just from our show alone, not all the other great shows they have, just from our show alone, this app is worth its weight in Bitcoin. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Sports Betting Weekly. You keep lying when you ought to be truthing. And you keep losing when you ought to not bet. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So how good was that three minutes to us? We provided some great exposure for some really good businesses. We got Ziggy to join us, and Mississippi State hit a three at the buzzer to win the game on the court. We were getting three and a half, so that live play just catched for the first segment, and Columbus scored two. It's like Christmas. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Let's get over to Ziggy. Ziggy, thank you, for joining us. as always. We appreciate it. Let's talk about uh, the Florida Derby. Honestly, at this point. Are, do you know who you like already? No matter oh, yeah. what, I, I I know who I like. You know, I I'm not I am not a favorite guy. So the the seven horse McGay horse greatest honor. I'm not even throwing him in my exact box. We're not talking though, Zig, about the Florida Derby. I'm talking about the Kentucky Derby. Have you already? Oh, the seen Kentucky the Derby? Derby? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Florida do Derby. Do you think any of the ones you see could win it? Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a couple of that are out there, but again, I like to see after the prep races and to go back. I watch the replays of the prep races, you know, see if a horse had an easy, an easy time of winning a race, you know, or somebody was in trouble, and you know, and then I look and I'm looking for value. I'm not looking to bet a horse that's going to pay seven dollars in the Derby, eight dollars, especially when you got up to twenty horses in the race, you know. Now, if the horse was a special horse like Saddle Slough, no, exactly. But the beauty of the last few years is the fact that there's been like a handful. So we've been getting nine to two favorites, you know. Yeah, uh, and so that 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 you know, for me, it was an exotic player. That's really more. Of a, well, yeah, you know, that's right, an exotic. Yeah. All right. So I mean, so what what I'm saying is, like, I'm not going to play like an, an eight to five shot, and you know, or even two to one. That's not me. I, you know, I'm looking for double digits, you know, on horses. And we yeah. talked about it earlier. The trainer, the jockey, the horse, you know, the post. Yeah. Everything's important. But let's talk about trainers with you. Right now, who's the best trainer in the business with the horses he's got? Well, listen, doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. Joe Torrey, the best manager ever? No. No, just I'm had, talking about right now. The horse no, no, but I'm saying right now, it's the market, it's, but it's the same thing, Mark. Bob Baffert, he has money behind him. You know, they go buy horses. So, yeah, you could say, oh, Bob Baffert's the best, you know? Well, maybe, you know, maybe if he was on even playing ground with other trainers, you know, everybody was on the same, you know, had the same type of money coming in to, to go buy horses and what whatnot, maybe he wouldn't be the best, you know? So, you know, you could say, yeah, Baffert is, you know. And, you know, the but other thing you mark- for you, your wallet, for your pocketbook, over the last three months when you bet, because you bet a lot, you're a horse player, Who, who's right now the jockey? If you were going to have another grandkid, this trainer's won you so much money, you would recommend they name him after him. Who would it be? Uh, Well, 
I ain't, I'm not saying Baffert because I don't bet Baffert's horses because you ain't getting any. To me, it's you know you get a six dollar horse. It's the same thing with some of these other guys, Pletcher. You know, they, again, they got people behind them that are looking to you know to win the big races. Well, you could you know, say that the same thing about jockeys because you know we talk yeah. about all the time. There's certain That's right. They just own. They own that colony. They yeah. own it there. You know, so and I can tell you. Horse. I'll tell you something. There's some guys I know. That like like what's his name Pratt, jockey, you know. Every time I bet the guy, his horse ain't around, you know. So it's also who you who you do good with, you know. Oh, sick. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. somebody's got to be dead to you. That jockey's yeah. dead to me. We had a situation yeah. out where yeah. Wet threw out a horse on the day that Gaffleone won four, and it was that jockey that he threw out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He threw him out on Thursday. On, yeah. on Saturday, he won four in a row. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, right now, I mean, the best, like, like, if you talk about jockeys, again, they get mounts, you know, where they're where they're stationed at. You know, we got the Ortiz, Iraq. He's probably one of the, the top ones now. Uh, when what's-his-name gets uh, gets a horse that has a shot, he, he's a good jockey, Rosario. You know, he, he relocated out to California. Uh, you know, Drew, you know, they're all, you know, there's good jockeys there. Like Mike Smith, Mike Smith went out to California, became a star. Well, I he, wasn't think a, he wasn't a star, superstar in New York. He was a good no. jockey, but he went yeah, out and guess what? He hooked up with the right, the right trainer, all the white horses and he's a star. New York, those are all different colonies. And, it, and yes. that's what they call it. A group yeah. of jockeys, it's a jockey colony. And, and, you know, if you're trying to get mounts and they're already set, it's hard to pick up mounts. Yeah. Really you, you look at, you know, you go back, well, over probably 20 years ago, you know, down in, down south, Pat Day. And Pat, Pat Day took his tack to New York. He didn't last long in New York. He didn't do too good in New York, you know. Yeah, now, it, over the years, yeah. over the years of betting the horses, 40, over 40 years of betting them, today, the best jockey – I still say is Cordero. If I had a if I had yeah, a horse in the Kentucky yeah, Derby, you know, if he, he was around, that's who yeah. I would want riding my horse. Yeah, you know? he's a legend, no doubt. All right, let's yeah. let's talk about the Florida Derby now. On a on a Florida Derby day, how many of the racetracks will you bet that are in the race form? There's what eight race tracks in the race form. Like oh, that? there's Christ! You could there's a million tracks, Mike uh, Mark. You could bet anything. Not like the when we first started off. That's the best part. You know, we played the New York track. That was running, and at nighttime you didn't have a, a track to bet except the, either Roosevelt or Yonkers. The travel. Yeah, when I grab my but, form, but today, a, today I bet any, Mark. I could look at, I could look at Tampa Bay for a couple of races. I could look at Gulfstream for a couple of races. You got Aqueduct. Aqueduct in the winter time. I can tell you this: my experience over the last thirty years with Aqueduct is that you probably could find maybe two races you know, to look at during the uh, card and that's it. Probably. Uh, you got, um, fairgrounds. Santa Anita's gotten to the point where that's like, you know, almost like, like aqueduct because you look at some of the cards and there's five horses in a race, five horses, five horses. I talked to Squeak, talked to Squeak this week and, and, and we were laughing about that. First of all, I don't believe they should be running horses in the winter time. You know, they got to go to Florida. I'm betting off of my phone. I really don't care where the horse is located when I'm betting it. And yeah. the poor horse is running against the snow's coming sideways. It's 30 below, and the horses are running on the back stretch. And sometimes the caller can't call the race because he can't see him because of the snow. I'm thinking yeah. they, should, they should not run that race. All right, so let's yeah. talk Florida yeah. Derby. Um, you, you mentioned the favorite. Of course, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a good horse. None of these horses are good. Are a slam dunk and derby horse yet? They may be after Saturday, but they're not yet. So yeah. he's to us. the the seven greatest honor. He's got the the, the leg up on on all of them. So if I was going to make a <laughs> like a superfecta box, then yeah, I'd throw him in. But me, I'm I'm only playing a couple of dollars at the box, you know. So I'm not looking, you know, I'm not looking to bet twelve dollars in exact the box and win. Twenty-eight dollars. That's not me. I'm just not doing that. So when I look at the race, when I when I was looking at this race here, the horses that I do like and that I'm going to use is going to be the the rail horse, 
Matsor, she's got his jockey riding for him, Alvarado. Nova Rags. I'm using him. Is that his favorite jock? That's one of his uh, Alvarado rides for him. If you look at the race before, Alvarado's on the rail horse again. Well, guys, they, you know, that's going to be a, that's going to be a double I'll make. Their best jockey. Yeah, I'm, so I'm. I can tell you, like the like I said, race thirteen, the rail horse is another mod horse with Alvarado, and that's my double. I'm going to use doubles, one with the one in the Florida Derby. I'm also in the Florida Derby. I'm going to use. I'm going to jump over a horse first, and then I'm going to go to the next horse. Is the nine horse collaborate? This horse here, the, the, first of all, the trainer. Don't know enough about him. He's from Barbados, and I can tell you this. Barbados, they train their horse. Some of those trainers train their horses on the beach, you know, to get them uh, strengthen, you know, strengthen yeah, their muscles. I used to do that when I went to Marietta, man. <laughs> so you look at this guy, Joseph, Safi Joseph, right? You look at him, and he's hitting at – Eyes are getting older, Mark. But you look at his win percentage for last year, 21%. This year, I, I don't know if they're – yeah, they might – they must be. He's got 229 starts already, and he's at 47 wins, 21%. But this horse here was well-meant. You look at him, his first race in the slop at six furlongs, and he was even money, seven to five. Okay, you, you, he would have paid 480. He took a step slow in the slop, and he came out of the 10 hole, and he got beat by a length and a quarter. Okay? His next race, they stretch him out. It's a, that's a, you know, one-turn mile is an elongated sprint, really, is what it is. It's not like it was a two-turn mile. But he crushed, again, even money, 11 horses in the race. He won by 12. He, he just devastated them. And he got a 90 speed buyer so he went from a 72 in the slop he popped up to a 90 when they stretch him out he's why one of the hottest sires in the game today into into mischief okay so he's i'm definitely using him okay now the third horse I'm gonna... you know what, at, at this point i almost think we should have played the 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 uh abin costello mutter fodder yeah. horse <laughs> <laughs> if I had known you were going to say sire, I would have had yeah. that clip ready. That's yeah. some funny stuff. I don't but, care. But, who it is. but he is. It's he, he just happens to be the hottest sire going. Um, and then the third horse I'm going to throw in, and here's the price horse, is the eight horse, soup and sandwich. Now, you look at him, Mark. Now, Mark Case, good. I, I catch a lot of. A lot of winners with this guy, with this trainer, okay? And he's all over the place. He has horses everywhere. He has horses up in Woodbine when they run. They're down in – he runs them in New York. He runs them in Florida. He runs – and in Florida, whether it's Tampa Bay or Gulfstream, he's there. What's his he first also, name? Mark. Mark I Case. like him already. Yep. Uh, but he's he's a good trainer. Uh, I do good with him. But now here's the thing that interests me about this horse. I love his breeding. Again, by Into Mischief. On the backside, he's by Tappet. Okay? Now, here's where I like even – I like start liking him even more. You look, he's a homebred. He's by Live Oak Studies. He's owned by Live Oak Plantation. Okay? Live Oak Plantation, you know, the, the ladies, the hair to the Campbell Soup. But and the thing that always baffled me about the, the the owners is with all the horses they have and the everything that's at their disposal, how this place was never in the top ten in the country, like with earnings. They should be in the top ten, you know, what they had. You know, they had what's his name was a trainer, a guy from New York, Pat Kelly. And Pat Kelly used to be good. Okay. You go back and you look at Pat Kelly. He was a decent trainer. He had some some nice, nice horses. He did and he, and he won big races. Something happened. And this lady finally smelled the coffee and took the horses away. I used to tell Pete all the time because he had Kelly training his horse. And I used to tell him, Pete, 
If I was that lady, I go to Pat Kelly and say, Pat, how many horses are in your barn? My horses, 30, 40. You take the top 20 you want and give me the other 20 and I'll bring them to another trainer. I'm going to see who does better. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and guess what? Eventually. That a good reality show. <laughs> I would have that every week. Mark, eventually she did do that. She she took horses, gave them to Billy Mott and, and another guy that you see on the card. Uh, if you ever see him training, his name, the last name is Trumbetta or something like that. Trumbelette or something like that. I can't remember his last name. But she split up her horses between those two trainers. And now she still has a lot of her horses with Case, and she has some with the other guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. This horse is interesting, Mark. The only thing with this horse is he, if you look at his first race at Gulfstream, right, another one, he came out and he devastated him. Then he goes down to Tampa. The only thing with the Tampa race was there's only three horses in the race, okay? But the thing was the jockey said afterwards. And if you go back and you read up on the Florida Derby, talk, see what the case said, the, what the jockey told him. He said, once I got to the top of the stretch and I let him go, he just took off. Boom. You know? And that's why this horse intrigues me, and I'm going to use him. Because like I said, you look at his breeding. He's got nice breeding. I like the breeding. I don't have any doubt that he's going to be able to handle a mile and an eighth. And so the, so the question I have for you is, do they name like all these so horses have the name soup, some kind of reference to Campbell in their name? Uh, no, she does have she does have uh, a decent amount of horses. You'll see like super S-O-U-P-E-R, yeah, yeah. you know, super this or super that, you know, super in something else, you know. Uh, but, you know, and I, I'll tell you, like I said, with this trainer, I've done good with this trainer. You know? well, that's good to know. All right, so what we got is we got uh, we got a, a one. You're, you're going a one-one double. You're going to throw the rail in both the thirteenth. I'm going to throw the one in the thirteenth race, right? In with one, eight, nine, and depending on what it pays with the seven, because the one is a price in the thirteenth race. He's ten to one, and I looked yeah, at that you race. Your money back. Well, you might get all your money back if the yeah. seven. It's better than but, the nine. I'll tell you what. I look at that thirteenth race. And I'm saying, why is this horse 10 to 1? Now, that's the one. I'll have to look at that when I pick yeah. up my farm in the morning. All right, yeah. so as always, we'll text over the weekend. You know, me, you, and uh, Joe yeah. from Kids of the Kid, we kind of keep squeaking. That's it. Come on, too, I think, one of these uh, shows. That's it. All right, we'll talk, man. All right, be good, brothers. Yeah. Good luck to you. Maybe may you with you. With you. All right, you're listening to the Sports Betting Weekly. I am second half Chaz. You're either on the belly up. Sports Podcast Network. You might be watching at sportsbettingweeklylive.com. Or if it's Thursday about 8.40, you've already cashed one live bet. You already got a goal, so you already need a half goal to cash another live bet. I told you you would cash tickets. You're cashing tickets. It, it, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. At championshipfootballs.com, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee on every single souvenir football that they sell. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. There's nothing worse than trying to find the right gift for somebody that already has everything. Whether that special present is for a New England Patriots fan or an Ohio State Buckeyes backer. Maybe Gramps is a lifelong New York Giants supporter. Or your brother-in-law is a 12th man living in Seattle. Know a member of the Michigan State Alumni Association? Is there a better Father's Day gift for someone who's a Baltimore Ravens fan? Send them the coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Now, if your favorite pro team is the Buffalo Bills or those Minnesota to Vikings. Well, they're sorry about that. Also, if you're a New Mexico State Aggies or Tulane Green Wave alumnus, not much they can do. After all, the name isn't nice effort. You had a pretty good season, footballs.com. The name is championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Hey, this is an important message. I'm second half Chaz from Sports Betting Weekly. Sports betting is supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. If you're hurting yourself by gambling with money you don't have, check out our website, 
for the Gambler's Anonymous phone number. When Vince Young scored on 4th and 5 in the 2006 Rose Bowl, two things happened. The Texas Longhorns won the NCAA title, and ChampionshipFootballs.com was born. From Texas to Alabama to Ohio State, and now for Super Bowl winners too. ChampionshipFootballs.com is the place for the coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Now, 10 years later, ChampionshipFootballs.com has the autographs too. See if any of these names remind you of a special time in your football life. Michael Bennett, Lou Holtz, Joe Montana, Devin Smith, Jameis Winston, Rocky Blyer, Rocket Ishmael, Ara Parsegian, Mike Stonebreaker, Chris Zorich, Luther Bradley, Todd Light, Tony Rice, Lawrence Taylor, Dave Casper, Marcus Mariota, Rudy Rudiger, David Tyree. Enter the promo code RADIO and you'll instantly save $50 on any of the championshipfootballs.com autographed footballs. Championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Sports Betting Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly, where we are following our live tickets. We've hit already on the Mississippi State plus three and a half. They actually put up a three with a tick. One second left on the clock. It went in. They could have settled for a tie in overtime. And the Richmond over, that was it. They never, they never scored again. But, of course, once you go over 66 and a half, we don't really care what you do. And it worked out. We hit two, two bats. And then we got Columbus. They scored. Now, I think Columbus is just going into the third um, period. They're going to break, right? Is that right, Wes? And they're going to have a little bit of power play to start the period, too. So that bet that we made for minus 119 is now at minus 160. So that's one way. I mean, if the number's getting better for you, then yeah, I should have waited. But if the number's getting worse for you, then you've got to like your bet and you sit tight. Well, you could ask a good better to get at minus 160 if you wanted to. I have enough tickets for the day. <laughs> I already got two sheets of tickets. <laughs> I'm good right now. Thank you very much. My big bet of the day is Memphis. So I didn't give you guys that yet by uh, text. But I told you, I've been doing better with the college, these minor brackets, little tournaments than I have been with the, the big boys, but that's because, uh, you know, one school is just much better and they just, they win. So that tends to be how it works out. But Pepperdine was real nice in the, uh, in the CB, CBI, CIB. I don't know what it was. It was really hard actually to find it. <laughs> it was hard to find the score, uh, but it was um, one of those smaller tournaments, but they ended up coming back and, and dominating. They won by 30, I think. So we cashed three days. They went back to back to back, and we cashed, I think, seven. I think we went seven and two on them. So, you know, most people seven and two on on a weekend. But, Wes, like you said, when you bet a little differently and use that sports betting lessons philosophy of it's not always what you the bet or, it's who, or who you bet, it's what how you bet them. And so that's seven and two is pretty good for one team. Yep, it sure is. And it's it's the way you manage it all that, that – Gets you paid on Money Monday. All right, so let's talk about your other. So you already hit, Ron, the, right at the beginning. You had the over in the Rangers game. They're already up to eight. They've scored eight goals between them. Holy cow. Yeah, we, we hit that one. I laid that before we got on, and it was it was three to I'm nothing. Telling you, I'm telling you, Wes, one of the things that I love about that over total on the days that I would like it, I bet you're going to add up every single goal. And I and it's fun to do it. You you count and you see we're oh, we're at eighteen. You know you count oh, we're at twenty seven. It's really a fun. It's a fun bet to make. It really is. I didn't I didn't think I'd have so much fun. You know what I really like when all my other games are done and I'm good. I had a good day. I got a positive number. I'm sitting around waiting for to count. I just count every about twenty minutes. I open my phone up and I just count. It's just so much fun. It really is. One well, well, year. So you're not tied into whatever game is on TV in, in your market. You just look at the scores and, you know, count some goals. And you got to, you're out of it early. You know, sometimes you're out of it early. Which way you go, it doesn't matter. Rangers and the Flyers with eight goals on the board. I mean, you're you're okay with a couple games not scoring much at this point. Right. But you also know, you know, by the, by the time the 7 o'clock games go around, you know, the Vegas games, the, 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 uh, the uh, two TLA teams. 
right? The uh, Anaheim Ducks and the Los Angeles Kings. By the time those games run around, you know if you got a shot. You, you're you, you're gonna otherwise, you know, like you said, you're not don't sit around in hockey. I've watched enough hockey now with us to know you don't sit around waiting for 12 goals in the nightcap. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen too often. All right, so let's talk to John. John, uh, you, you you still even though you were gone, you were still getting your bets in, you said, right? So where are you yep. going into this weekend? What what NBA teams are, are cranking up? Because remember, a certain time in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about who's in the playoffs and who isn't in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. This, this is when you really start getting into the main uh, bulk of the schedule for the NBA teams. And, and one of the teams I want to start really looking at now, especially because LeBron got injured, I would switch my focus over to the Los Angeles Clippers because I feel like the Clippers, after what happened last year, now that LeBron is gone, I think that's kind of their, let's say, division and conference to kind of come up. We, we kind of see what they did. Obviously, San Antonio yesterday, they're playing them again today, so we'll keep an eye on that. But but I feel like this is a team that, that you got to keep an eye on coming out of the West. And also Denver, they made a late trade. Um, today, and they added a key piece. Uh, Joker is is in the mix with the uh, MVP, you know, uh, nominees. So you got to keep an eye into that. I, I really think, again, that we're going to have uh, the West Coast kind of win the championship again. Uh, no disrespect to the East Coast. No disrespect to Giannis, who's a superb player. But I think the West Coast, as far as their teams and their benching and their coaches, is a little bit more well-equipped to, to win the championship going forward. What about, you mentioned that earlier today, and again, when you go to the sportsbettingweekly.com page and you go to the headers, you can watch the old shows, you can see some of the other projects we're working on, but you also see the hashtag cash tickets page, and that's where you go to to get to be able to talk with us. But during the day today, you mentioned uh, the trade deadline. Did you see anything that, that really jumped at you? Um, there, there was a few pieces that move. Uh, Victor Olin people move spots. Um, I'm not really sure if this is anything that, uh, you know, that kind of moved. I think uh, Lou Williams moved from the Clippers, but the Clippers got uh, Rondo in return. Um, so I, I, I would almost kind of call that a, a fair trade. Lou Williams is a great scorer, and, and they're both going to be coming off the bench. So I'm not really sure that really changes the aspect of it. Um, I was really looking for the Lakers probably to make a move. I don't know if they pulled the trigger. There was a lot of talks of them getting Lowry from Toronto. I don't know if that happened. And then there was also talks of the Knicks uh, making some moves, uh, you know, with some possible point guard scenarios. I don't think any of the moves today changed anything significantly except adding uh, another piece to the puzzle, so to speak. So it didn't change. It didn't really change any any of my aspects of teams moving up, so to speak. All right. No, that totally makes sense. And, you know, you can't, you know, in the NBA, as much money as they make, it's not really easy to do a blockbuster trade this time of year, you know? Again, you look what what Harden did. I mean, it's going to – if it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen earlier because you've got your guys. I mean, this is your – you're making a – your run. You're looking for pieces. You're not looking for – you know, a star, unless the guy's unhappy, that's what Harden was. So it'll be interesting to see, but I definitely know that you get more consistency in the NBA in the playoffs. You've seen the, oh my God, the wide swings from one quarter to another this year. Your, your team's down by 12 at, at the end of the one, they're up by 12 at halftime. How the hell did that happen? You know, it's just amazing what we have seen. And that John has been consistent now for most of the season. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, the swings in NBA is brutal, just like you said, one quarter to the next, even in the span of four or five minutes. I, I, I forgot. I think it was, uh, uh, I forgot what it was, the Sixers Warriors game where we've seen a 20 point swing, you, you know, in a matter of, of one quarter that totally changed the other way. So, you know, as far as a betting standpoint, th- this is brutal, but this is what you got to, you know, watch out for when you're betting the NBA because you never know. But like you said, as we get closer towards the playoffs, you know, the defenses start tightening up. You, you know, the star, these superstar players really start showing up. And, and this is where you kind of see the cream of the crop kind of rise a little bit more, you know, from the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. Yeah, and, and the thing about it, and we'll talk with Wes about that. You know, what? when you're doing live action and those swings, it's hard because the numbers constantly change. I mean, they go up and down the court in 12 seconds. Well, at least with hockey, when you're doing live action, it's a little easier to get in a click. You still don't sometimes, but it's a little easier than basketball. 
Yeah, hockey's a little bit easier because because you have those kind of opportunities. Like you said, the scoring isn't that drastic where, you know, NBA, you could, you know, have somebody hit a couple of threes and then they'll, you know, you'll miss, you, you miss your opportunity, you know, over or under change and everything like that. So hockey, you get a little bit of a leeway. All right, before we talk about March Madness, because we haven't really talked about March Madness at all, because again, uh, you know, we got a lot to talk about, but we're going we're gonna to finish up with that. I'll give it a, a solid minute. So, so start with Wes. Wes, uh, I'm not looking bracket talk. I'm looking about Saturday morning. What games are you looking at? So Saturday morning, uh, you know, I, I've, I've done well uh, playing Oral Roberts, and they're getting 11 points in this game. Uh, you know, I think that's rather interesting because these, these uh, higher-seeded teams, they've been coming out with defense. And, and they've been taking some of these top tier teams completely off of their game to where buckets aren't falling. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at that Oral Roberts and 11 points and I don't know that they win the game, although they could. I mean, they they threes are falling for them and their defense have been finding a way to get them extra opportunities. So I this Oregon State Loyola game, I'm not touching it. I, I could I could see it going either way. Seven points. I, I just don't believe in it. But uh, that all Roberts game in 11 points, I mean, that is uh, that is a really interesting one. And I, I'm probably going to be taking points there. Uh, let's, you talked about Houston. You, they made you a lot of money this year. Do you think Syracuse is going to keep shooting like they do? And if, if so, how does that name not go over 140? Well, you've, you've said it before. Houston, about every four games, they just stink. And I think we've seen the stink out of them. And now they get kind of four days to push the reset button and they're going against a team that no disrespect to Syracuse, but uh, Houston is the better team and Houston is the number two defense in, in the country and they are some shooters. So I, I, I will be taking Houston there and uh, I'm not going to wait on it. I don't think that that game uh, we're going to see much moving in the line in your favor. If you're a Houston player, it's at six and a half right now. Um, Houston has burned me a couple times on these first half overs. So I'm probably just going to take it. Right, yes, they, there's no doubt about that. But they more than kindly they paid you back paid. a couple times too. Holy cow. They came back to cover for the game that one time given 20. It was amazing. All right, John, let's talk to you. Have you broken down the college basketball this weekend already? Oh, oh yeah. I already looked ahead uh, just because obviously it's it, this is tournament time. you you got to look at it and – I, I know we're not kind of getting on the brackets, but my final four is still intact. So I'm going to be yeah, keeping an eye on to that. Yeah. Let's talk about Saturday. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go back. We'll talk about Sunday uh, with the, you, both of you, and then we'll call it a day. So what about Saturday? You got Oregon State. He mentioned uh, Loyola. Yeah. That's 12 and an 8. Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's wild. You, you, you seem kind of one side of the bracket with these lopsided numbers and everything like that, which, which is crazy. But if, if you're going to pick upsets – this was a year to do it in, in the COVID year. So, yep. you know, the, on that side of the dog train, you, you obviously got it. But I'm going to be sticking to my usual suspects. Uh, Houston, I, I, I like Houston I, as we were talking about them. Uh, Syracuse, same thing. No disrespect to Syracuse. But I think Houston is going gonna, is gonna to pick apart that little 3-2 or 2-3 zone defense that they do. Uh, Houston's not shy to shoot the ball. They have scorers. So. And Wes mentioned that. It's so funny because if you could bang it from three, there ain't no zone. The zone's not an issue. Yeah, the, the, I, I, exactly. The zone's not an issue. I was watching. I was actually watching that last game they played against West Virginia. West Virginia uh, looked very timid versus that zone defense. And I don't think Houston's going to have that same problem. And then uh, I'm going to be, you know, on the Arkansas side. And I forget what other game I was leaning on to that day, but you, you, you know, those would be the games that I stick with. Go to sportsbettingweekly.com, the cash tickets tab. You'll know. You'll know exactly what he's doing because he'll tell you. All right, Sunday, four more games, Wes. Uh, I see some names of people that have won me some money. You know, Sunday, I, I'm looking at USC, Oregon. Uh, I, I think that USC has got three players that are going to, play in the NBA and I mean the the, the Mobley brothers USC this two point spread is just flat out disrespectful the the last two games nobody's even come within 20 of them and I realize that it's a conference matchup but this is a this is just a new 
gear that USC has found these last couple games. I mean, I they just dismantled a well-coached Kansas team, uh, and it wasn't even close. And uh, so I, I, I like USC there. But then I'm also looking at this Creighton-Gonzaga game, and Gonzaga really can do whatever they want. I mean, they, they truly can. Uh, it's 13 points. That's one where I'm probably going to let the game get started. And if Creighton scores, if, if they go up two to nothing in the first four seconds of the game, we'll get a little bit of a discount there. So look how much, look how much that discount cost you in the last game because it was a nail biter at the line to win by the hook. But if you had two or three points earlier because you hopped on it live, it's just such a less stressful game that way, you know? It really is. The the other play I'm going to look at in this Creighton Gonzaga game is once we get once we get into the second half I'm looking to pump the brakes and and put some money on the under uh, because Gonzaga is going to have a big lead and uh, you know they may try and slow it down a little bit and this this under it, the over under is 158 right now it might get egregious I mean it might get to 175 and, and, and right I'm telling you that's one of the highest numbers you've seen right you don't see too many 160s in this tournament yet no but if if they it, if they score 65, 70 points at the end of the first half, we're going to find that over under in the high 170s, 180. And, and just simple math, that's way above what the what the line is right now. You pump the you, break. You, you've cashed on three or four of those in the last two weeks. Easy. All right, so let's go to John. John, Sunday, four games. Gonzaga, Michigan, Alabama, USC are the, are the teams that are favored. Yeah, it, I'm going to do the same as Wes, and, I, and I'm going to ride USC, like he was saying. I, I just think they're playing phenomenal basketball right now. Uh, they have all the momentum. Uh, the shooters are shooting. They're playing hot. It, it's it's hard not to like them. Uh, a little West Coast bias here because I've been following them most of the year, and, and they've been a pretty good team. So so I'm going to be, you, you know, riding on them. And then also, it, it listen, I, I know Michigan is number one. And they're a great team. But if you follow the show a couple of weeks ago, you know that I had Florida State as kind of the dark horse to kind of win the tournament. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to pull Florida State out of the hat. I'm staying. I'm sticking with my guns. Let's go, Knowles, and let's ride it out. So that's, <laughs> that's about what we talked about, right? Yeah. We talked about the how, how much a horse race. A horse is three to two. Mm. Don't dismiss it too quickly because – it's plus 150, and, and that Florida State is only plus 120. So yep. in that respect, it kind of puts it in in, in, uh, in reference. All right, so, uh, John, before we let you go, tell people how to find you. Uh, GMF Sports Consultants on Instagram, GMF Sports Betting on Facebook. You can also uh, type in GMF Sports Consultants on the web browser, pull up my website, hit me up in any way of those three methods, get signed up, also casting those tickets on the Sports Betting Weekly Hashtag uh, cash tickets. Sign up. Let's get some winners this weekend. Wes. You can find me at 151 Sports on either Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, uh, or uh, my members page. It's Chicago Options Trader uh, through the Discord app. You know, I'll tell you right now. If you listened to that show last week, I wouldn't have to talk anymore. <laughs> you'd be you'd be texting us. I'm telling you that right now. All right. So yeah, it's uh, thanks again to uh, PD at the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. The app it really is. With our show alone, it's worth its weight. Bitcoin today you made money, and and we'll so you got a Columbus update before we go. They still at the break. Third period still hasn't started. Oh, third period we're about a minute and a half in. Columbus is on another power play, so it should. We're catch. All there, we're going to cash. We'll be perfect for the night. Plus, I had that the basketball where the guy – I don't even remember the team. That's – okay, I'm going to tell you right now. That's the downside of, of hanging around with us at the sportsbettingweekly.com. Catch tickets because we move on to the next game so quick. If somebody asks you how you won, you, you might not even remember who it was. I am Second Half Chaz. You've been listening to sportsbettingweekly.com. Also at sportsbettingweeklylive.com. Also on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. Always be cashing.